so... <gasps> Chain gasping audibly in the background. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know what you're talking about. That was seamless. What I want, when I want, and how I want it. Leave you with the one in the air. Hey, platform, it's Rowan. And I'm Jean. And happy International Women's Day. So, we thought for this video, um, we would get out of the office. It is currently a very rainy day in London, but we have braved the weather and we are going to be going on a little tour of some bookshops which sell books for, about, and by women. Yes, and that's entirely in the spirit of International Women's Day, which started 109 years ago. I was really surprised by that, how long this has been running. Yeah, so we're still going and we're still like powering through that message today, sort of remembering the women that came before us and fought for our gender equality and are continuing to do so today. So I'm here with Emily, one of the booksellers here at Second Shelf, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the whole intention behind this bookshop. Yeah. So our owner, Alison, started the shop because she had been going around to rare book fairs and was shocked by not only how like male the, the trade and the clientele was, but how the gender inequality was reflected in the prices of things. So you have a book by a woman that is worth £100 and a book by the man of like the same level of fame, the same sort of first edition, everything. Um, that would be worth a thousand pounds. So she wanted to start a shop that was specifically focused on women in the rare book trade, both to like boost the sort of reputation of women who are already collected and to rediscover women who might be out of print. And we have like launches here for books often that are like coming back into print. Do you have any books that you would recommend for International Women's Day? I do. So this is our like go-to recommendation for teens which is I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith and it's like a coming of age story about a girl with a sort of very eccentric family and it's one of those books that's maybe been dismissed as like a teen or a romance kind of book but it's really not that it's really all about growing up and finding yourself. It's so like nice in here like it's so cute yeah. and homely and warm and there's like a little sofa and like all of these books on the walls look at this edition of Alice Walker Ooh, like a women's nice. press one so this is um the book published by Galdem which is a magazine for women and non-binary people of color so it covers everything from relationships family body image all sorts it's really great but I bought a book second hand by that author you showed me but not the one you showed me cool uh <laughs> you might have to be slightly more specific at this point i feel like i should be going to different parts of the shop and like exploring different shelves but i kind of don't want to because i feel like i might miss something i literally want to go through every single one of the books to make sure there's not a little nugget in here of something that's like exactly what i want to read that i'm going to miss if i just move on although i've just spotted over there a section entitled sisters of sorcery so, so we're just gonna we're, hang on. Get, we're just gonna we're gonna go over here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> just one that's just called witches, and I'm like, I'll take. Oh my, that cover that is gorgeous. amazing. Gorgeous color illustrations. Oh, that is so nice, like woodcut. Mm -hmm. Well, so we have like a whole range of prices, and this all has everything from twenty pound books to thousands of pounds. Oh my god. Sorry, sorry, my phone well, look at this. I love the fact that there's some old school stuff like this kind of thing that you've never like I've never been like oh yes this is a book that I knew existed before <laughs> and then you've got like Jacqueline Wilson as well. This is the cabinet where we keep all of the either fragile or very expensive things and often it's stuff that we have to do a bit more research on to find out um, more about it. Some of the stuff will be written by anonymous authors or like not easily attributable um, so we tend to do quite a lot of research on the history of um, older books and to try and find a bit more about them, which means that we might be able to pitch them to libraries um, and talk about like why they're so important to women's history. So this has been the second shelf, which is actually a relatively recent uh, addition to the London bookshop scene that it came around about a year and a half ago. So now we are going to make our way to our second stop, and this is a bookshop with a lot of history behind it that was actually opened in 1979. Sure. Wow. I'm gonna tell you right now, cause A 
Gays the Word Bookshop. Um, if you have ever seen the movie Pride, you might recognize it from that. This is an LGBTQ plus bookshop specifically. So we thought, what a great place to find some books about queer women. Yes, and we're specifically going to go on a hunt to find a book for each other. So really testing how much we know each other's book tastes. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> said about the second shelf that you just didn't want to turn away in case you missed something. I think that's just how I feel in bookshops. I don't yeah. think it's specific to any because <laughs> I'm feeling exactly the same way here. So I haven't quite decided yet but I'm currently in the graphic novel section and there are a few excellent choices. For example this is one of my favourite comic book series and it just it's a fantasy world but at college except the students are all magical creatures and most of them are LGBTQ+. So, I mean, or this is an excellent book about the true story of a suffragette called Sally Heathcote. There's sort of renditions of original like artwork from the period and it's just incredible. Too many choices. What I know about Jean is that she really likes fantasy. Dragon included is a plus. Um, and kind of queer lady romance. The lesbian fiction section feels like it's probably where we're going to get it. Is this for Jean or are you? This is for Jean. Listen. Okay. Got my books. Okay, so I have for you the unbinding of Mary Reed. So Although I did originally say that I thought you'd be into fantasy books, this one is about a lady pirate, which seems like that's I also know. gonna be your vibe. And it's also apparently based on the true story of um, Mary Reed, um, Anne Bonny, and Jack Rackham. Um, okay. They're real people. I do like a historical so, as well. So this one I picked up, which actually has a recommendation on the shelf from one of the booksellers, The Girls of Paper and Fire. And this was described as, I can actually read it right off the wall here, Asian lesbians fighting the patriarchy. I read it. In which case, did you did you like it? I loved it. So it's yes. an excellent choice. Yes. It's I'm going to put it back so someone else can read, read it. The sequel. Read the sequel. <laughs> and the last one is Of Fire and Stars, which is a YA kind of fantasy romance. And uh, this was also recommended by a bookseller in one of the little um, tabs. And uh, the thing I remember from it is that it was an unlikely pairing. Oh, okay. Which I think it's kind of fun, something a little like bit that. different. Uh, so that is yes, the second brilliant. one. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I've got two picked out for you. I'm just going to pop this to the side. This is set in a contemporary setting, but it's got fantasy elements because one of the characters is a witch and one is a werewolf. One is woman, one is non-binary, and it's about their relationship that and the like cutest thing. saving the world against like a magical power that threatens it. Okay, yes, thank so you. So good. Oh my gosh, that graphic. <gasps> <laughs> okay, thank you. We then have Yursa Daly Ward's autobiography. I haven't read this, I've read her poetry collections and loved her poetry, so thought that this is probably a good choice. Have you read this? I have indeed read okay. this. Well, there, we go, we there we go, we both yeah. got read, and I did really love it, okay. so excellent. excellent choice. And also may have read, but also amazing. I haven't read, actually. It's so good. I think this is such an important book to any sort of like modern understanding of the feminist movement and mm -hmm. being trans inclusive, really great. Perfect, in which case, two Swap. each isn't bad. No, not bad at all. So don't let me go now, your love is exceptional. Heisman's, which is a radical bookshop based around King's Cross. This is full of both fiction and non-fiction books and it's actually categorised really well so if you have a really specific topic that you want to find a book about they'll probably have it here. As you said radical bookshop so they have a lot of books on activism so if you want to get more involved in the feminist cause then this might be the place for you. So I've actually just walked over to the Companion and Activism section and it has one of our books, Glimmer of Hope. So this is by the teenage founders of the March for Our Lives movement, which is the movement against gun crime, especially in schools in America. Um, so this is really exciting because it has a lot of their sort of learnings, information about how they manage to be students and also pick up a cause and try and make a difference in their community. So they also have a massive gender and feminism section over here and I found one of my favourite feminist titles which is Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates and this is all about 
the different forms of sexism that people experience, whether you're in high school, in the workplace, on the bus, and sort of makes you feel a little bit like less alone and able to speak up. So one of the really exciting things about this bookshop is that it has a lot of new stock, also has some secondhand downstairs and some bargain one pound secondhand books. This is the vaults section of the bookshop, which is down the stairs and where they keep all of the fiction, poetry and a secret room where all of the secondhand books are found. So we talked to some of the booksellers upstairs and they have given us a list of books to check out down here that they think that you guys might like for International Women's Day. So one of them is, if I remember it is, this one, Juliet Takes a Breath. So this is about a girl who ends up having a summer internship with one of her favourite feminist authors, but does that woman live up to expectations? Read to find out. We were also recommended Only Ever Years by Louise O'Neill, which I can 100% concur with. And it was pitched as Mean Girls meets A Handmaid's Tale. And I think that pretty much sums it up. Hi. Uh, I just spotted this. We weren't going to talk about it, but I see it on the shelf. So I thought, why not? Um, this is Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. We've actually talked about a couple of her other books on the channel before, but this one's new. It is all about the world of the Bronte siblings. So if you're familiar with them at all, you might have studied them in school, you might have been told about the fact that when they were younger, they made up together this like imaginary world that all of them would share together um, before they actually started writing their books. And so this is a uh, graphic novel, which is all about the siblings and their lives, but also this world that they created together. And the illustrations are Amazing, super, super stylized. Also, they gave us tea when we came here, so we, <laughs> so we, we like these ones best so far. So now we're in our last bookshop of the day, which is Pages Cheshire Street, and they specialise in women, trans and gender non-binary authors. So in this bookshop, we are going to get some more recommendations from a bookseller and also just have a look around, see what we can find. So one of the books that I've just spotted while walking around is Taking Up Space, A Black Girl's Manifesto for Change. So we actually did a video with Darren about this, which I will link somewhere so you can check it out. Um, but essentially it's about the experience of the authors are going to university as black women and the experiences that they had there. So if you are a black girl who's wanting to go to university or learn about it, or just someone else who'd like to know about those experiences, Check out this book. So this is A Heart So Fierce and Broken, which is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely, a series that retells Beauty and the Beast, but with a female lead that has cerebral palsy. And it was one of my absolute favorite YA reads of 2019. So you've picked out a couple of books yep. for our viewers. Okay, so this first one, Color Outside the Lion, Stories About Love. It's an anthology for what, like teens sort of interested in what it's like to be in a relationship that crosses sort of boundaries. Second one, Pet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mezzi's previous book was called Freshwater and it was a book for adults, but this book is for kind of like YA, also maybe like kind of 12 and up about um, Jam and Jam and her is, has got to save her best friend and the people of the city that they live in from these monsters that adults can't see. And I just think it's like, Ooh, yeah, nice. <laughs> pretty exciting. Like, you know. You sold me, you yeah, sold me. Like, that sounds great. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about the bookshop? Like when was it set up and why? We already had a store called Pages of Hackney in Hackney in Clapton, but we wanted to set up a store that um, sort of related to the fact that most of our top sellers were books by women. In publishing, uh, sort of minorities, women, people of color, queer people, um, gender non-conforming people just don't really have the same rate of publication. And they're also not bought as much, it seems, by the general public. And so we wanted to have a bookshop where people could walk in and just be like, oh, I'm just gonna pick up <laughs> this book. <laughs> and it just happens to be by a woman. Yeah, because I know that a lot of people within the kind of book world online mm. have been talking about the idea of, you know, even if you feel like you're reading really diversely right. because the different characters you're reading about are super diverse, sometimes when you look at the actual authors that are on yeah. your shelves, it's actually not as many people as you thought that are outside of that idea of, you know, the straight white author who's a man that you might have learned about in school when you're learning about kind of classic and older literature. Mm -hmm. Come to a shop like this or even just at your local bookshop and to really think about who the authors are and why it is that you are reading the story and who you want to hear from. Yeah, thanks. Boom. Does that, <laughs> that work? Did we get it? Yeah, yeah. Very. 
Maybe once more, a little bit less daytime BBC One TV. <laughs> oh, well. You told us that was the vibe. <laughs> <fun. laughs> Thanks for joining me and Jean on this bookshop tour. We have bought more books than we thought we were going to at the start of this day, but we've managed to escape most of the rain, come out of it with a lot of new recommendations. Yeah, but you can never have too many. So I would still like to hear what everyone watching has to recommend in the comments down below. Absolutely. And if you want more videos like this, then please subscribe to Platform. I don't think the one o'clock news is coming out. Oh my gosh. <laughs>